Welcome to the Minimalist Mama. I'm Emily and today you're here for Simply Christmas. This is our virtual retreat where we're going to set aside some time this week and the following Fridays to do some self-reflection, some introspection, and intentional journaling about what we want this Christmas season to look like. I'm so excited that you're here. If you haven't already, be sure to go to the link in the description down below to download your worksheets. So here's what you're gonna need for this challenge. Each Friday, I'm gonna post a video here. Be sure you sign up at the link in the description down below to download your worksheets and then you'll get an email with the video. Print off the worksheets because you're gonna need to do some writing. Pick a space and a time to do your journaling each Friday. Let's think of this as like our own little virtual retreat where we're getting together, sitting down all together with our cozy Christmas socks and our mugs and our worksheets and favorite pens and we're just gonna spend some time hanging out together, talking about Christmas memories of the past that have impacted us, where we need to make intentional choices this year and ultimately what we want our Christmas this year to look like and how we can focus on what really matters. Just make sure when you print them off, um, you have printer ink in all the colors so they don't end up looking like this. Unless purple is one of your favorite colors, then totally fine. <laughs> We're gonna set aside a few minutes, grab some hot cocoa. I've got um, some hot chocolate in my coffee and my favorite llama mug today for this occasion and we're ready to begin. Well, one thing before we begin, there's a lot going on <laughs> today in the world, in my life. I'm sure there's a ton of stuff that's going on in your life as well. So let's just take a few deep breaths to clear our mind, relax, and just be ready to focus and put some intentional thought into the upcoming Christmas season. What is your favorite Christmas memory and what makes it your favorite? My favorite Christmas memories are pretty simple. <laughs> I remember being probably about three years old, maybe even younger, and just crawling under the Christmas tree, laying on my back underneath and looking up at the lights twinkling above me. That's one of my very favorite Christmas memories. I remember the smell of the tree, the lights twinkling, and just that sense of coziness and safety and joy that I felt in that moment. Christmas felt so magical to me as a child. It wasn't because my parents took us to Disney World for Christmas or we did like Polar Express train rides. We didn't do any of that. And I wonder if your Christmas memories are similar and that it wasn't so much what you were doing that was so out of the box and special as who you were doing it with or the meaning that it had for you. Maybe it was time you spent with a grandparent. Maybe it was decorating Christmas cookies or the tree, your family tradition of decorating the tree every year. Maybe it was going to Disney World and that was your special family Christmas tradition. It probably didn't feel frantic or hectic or dutiful. It probably didn't feel like something that you just had to do to check off that box for this year. I hope my kids don't remember me as frantic hurried and stressed out from trying to do all the things and please all the people. Although I've definitely been guilty of that in the past. I hope that they remember me from this Christmas as being at peace. Really enjoying the simple joys with them of playing in the snow, drinking hot chocolate, just spending quality time with them, reading the same. Christmas books over and over. <laughs> How do you remember your parents at Christmas? How do you want to be remembered? Ponder on this today as you think about your Christmas's past. What really made Christmas magical for you? And how can you recapture some of that? So go ahead and take this to your journal, jot down your answers, pause this video if you need to, and then we'll be ready for the next question. Okay, question two, making a list. What's on your have to do list? what's absolutely required of you that no one else can do. Go ahead and sharpen that pencil or in my case a pen <laughs> and get writing. Don't overthink it. Don't try to prioritize it. Just get it all out. 
all the things you can think of that you have to do. We're talking cleaning, laundry, dishes, writing, work, working out, keeping the kids and dog alive and fed. Get all the basics out first and then add in all the Christmas specific things. So getting a tree, decorating the tree, going to an office Christmas party, maybe, although maybe that's not a thing you have to do this year. Go to your kid's school Christmas concert, bake three dozen cookies for the cookie swap, and then you have to attend the said cookie swap, design, write notes and mail approximately 5,000 Christmas cards and so on. Whatever it is on your list of things that you have to do for Christmas, write it all down. Just get it all out of your head. These are things that you do every year, things that you've said yes to doing already this year. If you're anything like me, they're the things that you think you have to do or else they're not going to be done or they're not going to get done right. Fill up the space on your worksheet and then you can also use space on the back. You can even add an extra piece of paper if you really need to. Go ahead and pause this video here and brain dump it all out. Okay, great work. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I already feel so much better just seeing everything written out and having it out of my head and down onto the paper. At the same time, it's a little scary. Like, how in the world do I think I'm gonna be able to accomplish all of this and feel peace and calm and be present and relax ever? <laughs> We're gonna get to the part in this series about streamlining and letting things go and prioritizing. But for now, just as you go through your day today, write down any additional things that pop into your head as to-do things that you need to get done and add those to your list. So how do you feel about what's on your list? Maybe it's not overwhelming for you. Maybe you actually feel a little bit bored when you look at it. We're gonna get to talking about the fun stuff and the want to do stuff. So don't worry if it feels a little bit boring right now. But for extra credit, Write a few notes down about how looking at your list makes you feel. Does it make you feel stressed or overwhelmed or does it make you feel bored? <laughs> okay, next, let's talk about humbugs <laughs> or people or things that are draining you. So here's a few things from my list and then I'm gonna give you time to write down your own. Number one is Christmas shopping. I don't really enjoy, I. I do enjoy it, but I don't enjoy it. It's complicated. Some people, it just seems like they already have everything and I don't know how to figure out what to get them. That's actually worthwhile. And I tend to put a lot of pressure on myself to get the perfect thing, something that they're really gonna love and that is just the perfect gift for them. And then there's just a sheer volume of people to shop for. There's also family gatherings. Lots of people, lots of noise. Some gatherings are with family that we only see once a year. So it's just awkward. Conversations are awkward. You're trying to sum up how you've been for a whole year and what's gone on in your life in a 15 minute conversation with a lot of noise going on. It's just not my thing. <laughs> That's the introvert in me coming out. I don't do well with a lot of noise and chaos or making small talk. So all of that together is just not my favorite situation to be in. Time spent with both my family and my husband's family that we have to balance and try to feel like we're spending enough time with both sides and trying to make it even and it's just a lot and then lastly is money how much money can we spend on gifts or traveling or donating or like fun activities there's a lot of money stresses that come up for me around this time of year so here's the thing that i really want you to hear me on we can't remove all of the humbug situations or things or people from our lives, but we can be self-aware and proactive about it. So we can control how we react, how we protect ourselves and our time and energy, and how we refill ourselves after a draining situation. So for example, I know that big family gatherings are really draining for me, spending time around certain people is really draining for me, so I'm aware of how I might be affected and I can plan around that. I can only control my own response. I go into it hoping for the best, but I might limit the time that I spend there or plan ahead for some quiet time 
by the fireplace, reading a good book, or watching a cheesy Hallmark movie. Okay, so now pause, take this to your journaling worksheets, and write down those activities, people, or tasks that really drain you and cause some unhealthy stress. And for extra credit, you can write down some ideas for ways that you recharge or things that would be helpful for recharging. Okay, last question for this week, question number four. What do you want to do to celebrate this year? Maybe you really want to go caroling to your neighbors or you really want to do random acts of kindness. Maybe you really want to do an Advent devotional as a family, or you really want to attend the candlelight Christmas Eve service. This is not asking yourself, what does everyone else think looks like fun to do for Christmas? <laughs> I mean, you can find bucket lists and lists of things to do with your family all over the internet, but this is really about asking yourself what sounds like it would be fun or what sounds like something that would be really good that you want to do. What really speaks to you? Maybe baking Christmas cookies sounds really fun to you and that sounds like a really fun thing to do with your kids. Maybe it doesn't. Maybe it sounds really stressful and messy and you just really would rather not handle that. Either way it's fine but just get clear about what are the things that are really fun for you and you enjoy or think you would enjoy and what things are not. Maybe your thing is making handmade gifts. Maybe it's handing out gift cards to people who are working on Black Friday or during the Christmas holidays. Maybe it's volunteering or organizing your church's Christmas program. What are those things that really set off a spark of joy in your heart when you think about doing them? So now pause this video and write that out on your worksheet. If listing out what sounds like fun for you, really getting in touch with what you want to do is hard, you're not alone in that. As moms especially, we're often so focused on making things fun for other people that we kind of lose touch with what is fun for us or what we enjoy. We have a hard time then connecting with what sets us apart and some of the unique gifts that we bring to the world. So if this is a harder ex exercise for you to do, Give yourself some grace and patience and it's okay to experiment this Christmas with some things that you think might be fun but you're not sure about and then you'll know for next year. I would love to hear from you about any insights that you've gained through this exercise today or how it went for you. I'd love to hear that in the comments down below or you can always comment or send me a message on Instagram as well. If none of this stuff is really gelling for you yet, Keep mulling over these questions and pondering them as we go through the questions next week and the following week. Some common themes are going to emerge and you're going to get a lot of clarity on how to really make this Christmas season matter and what you need to focus on and what things you can let go. I'm really looking forward to that and seeing how this process can bring about clarity and freedom and more joy for you. So. If you're not subscribed, be sure to subscribe and you can hit the bell notification to get notified when the next video comes up on Friday. And don't forget, if you haven't already, to sign up to download your worksheets at the link that's in the description and then you'll also get the emails with the videos in them. So that is it for this Friday. Thank you so much for joining me for Simply Christmas. I hope you have an amazing day and I will see you back here next week.